Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm here today to tell you about The Memory of Water by Emmy Itaranta. She's a Finnish author and this was her debut novel and it is positively poetic. It's so lyrical and so beautiful. So I'm going to start off by reading you a little bit. I'm going to read from the prologue. So I won't really be giving anything away there. Let me get to that. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about it after you're hooked by these beautiful words. So everything is ready now. Each morning for seven weeks, I have swept the fallen leaves from the stone slabs that form the path to the tea house. And 49 times I have chosen a handful among them to be scattered on the stones again, so that the path wouldn't look too much like it had been swept. That was one of the things my father always insisted on. Sanya told me once, the dead don't need pleasing. Perhaps they don't. Perhaps I do. Sometimes I don't know the difference. How could I? when they are in my blood and bones, when all that is left of them is me. I haven't dared to go to the spring in seven weeks. Yesterday I turned on the tap in the house and held the mouth of the water skin to its metal. I spoke to it in pretty words and ugly words, and I may have even screamed and wept, but water doesn't care for human sorrows. It flows without slowing or quickening its pace in the darkness of the earth, where only stones will hear. The pipe gave a few drops, perhaps a spoonful into my water skin. I know what it means. This morning I emptied the rest of the water from the skin into the cauldron, brought some dried peat from the shed into the tea house, and placed the fire starter next to the hearth. I thought of my father, whose wishes I had violated, and my mother, who didn't see the day I became a tea master. I thought of Sonia. I hoped she was already where I was going. A guest whose face is not unfamiliar is walking down the path, offering me a hand I'm ready to take. The world will not spin slower or faster when we have passed through the gate together. What remains is light on water, or a shifting shadow. Wow, isn't that beautiful? It just gets better from there. And by the time I was done, I had to go back and read this prologue because it meant so much more. I could see all the foreshadowing, everything she had set up, and it came full circle, just like that circle on the cover. I read somewhere that the Finnish version was written at the same time as the English version by the author, so this is not a translated book. It's her own words. But I did hear that the title of the Finnish version um, had something to do with a tea master. And I really like the title of the English version because I think that it incorporates a whole lot of what this story is really about, which is water and memory and also secrets and that coming around full circle just like the cover. So let me tell you a little bit about what this book is about. It's an eco dystopia and global warming has caused such a disaster that much of the world is no longer livable. Uh, the oceans have risen and intruded into to land spaces and contaminated great deals of fresh water and what water sources there are available for for drinkable potable water are mostly controlled by the military and even here in um, Noria's town or her village really which is in probably northern Sweden or northern Finland somewhere in the Scandinavian north Noria has no idea what snow is. She's read about it in very old books that her mother has, and that's all. So you can imagine that everything is quite a bit hotter 
in this this world and Noria is the daughter of a tea master and her father is training her to become a tea master even though women are not normally allowed to become tea masters and tea masters have traditionally been the keepers of secret springs or even the protectors of, of sources of fresh water that's sort of their ancient ancient tradition and most of them at this time of course have lost control of those springs or the springs have dried up or don't exist anymore and so that's a forgotten thing but Noria's father has a secret spring and that secret that is passed on to her is sort of the core of all her troubles and how secrets contaminate our lives and cause a great deal of conflict and that flows through the whole piece so again it's a beautiful beautiful book and I hope you pick it up if you do please leave me a comment below or if you've already read it I'd love to hear your thoughts about it and in the meantime please like share subscribe uh, more to come as I keep reading and sharing these books I love. Hope to hear from you soon.